In the 1940s, the United States introduced a bomber prototype unlike any other at the time, one using jet engines. The revolutionary plane, the Douglas XB-43 Jetmaster, was the result of several great efforts, trials, and errors. Its predecessor, the XB-42, informed the craft. However, they replaced its piston engines with two General Electric J-35 engines, boasting a powerful 4,000 force pounds of thrust from each. Efforts to mass-produce the plane ultimately failed. Despite taking the title as the first American jet bomber, deeper issues with its design and stability killed the project, and it never served in any operational capacity. The aircraft did, however, give pilot Glenn Edwards his record-breaking speedy flight across the U.S., flying from Long Beach, California to Washington, D.C. in a mere five hours. The XB-42 The original Douglas XB-42 Mixmaster project started as a corporate exploration of how to create a fast, high-altitude attack plane. On the Air Force's side, the Air Material Command's military branch leaders considered the feasibility of a jet-powered bomber since October 1943. The XB-42 project seemed a promising candidate. Douglas Aircraft toyed with the initial idea of a promising twin-engine bomber aircraft designated XB-43. They showed the concept of the Army Air Force. While the military liked the proposal, they wanted the plane to be a low-cost, small project compared to the complex and considerably expensive B-29 Superfortress development program. To the Army Air Force, the possibility of an XB-43 was inexplicably tied to the performance of the B-29. Reciprocating engines powered the original prototype. However, they were placed in the fuselage, which left the laminar flow airfoil wing without drag-encouraging pylon mounts and engine cowlings. At first glance, the airframe seemed best suited to use turbojet propulsion. With the airframe complete, the United States Air Force has decided to extend its XB-42 contract with Douglas in March 1944. They requested the development of two turbojet prototypes designated XB-43. They also reduced their initial order on production to only those prototypes, instead of the original 13 test planes. Therefore, the XB-42's development serves as the launching pad for the XB-43 Jetmaster. The XB-42's design was somewhat revolutionary, using a cylindrical fuselage and a considerably sizable cruciform tail with a coaxial pusher propeller at the rear. Air intakes were positioned on the leading edge of the wing. The aircraft used tricycle gears while on the ground, considered unusual at the time. Likewise, the pilot and co-pilot sat in separate bubble canopies while the bombardier sat in the aircraft's nose area. The aircraft's defense included a pair of 50 caliber machine guns that could fire forward and four rear-directed machine guns under the back of the plane's wings. They were controlled from the co-pilot's chair through a complex aiming system, albeit with a limited field of fire. The primary goal was to make a plane so fast it wouldn't even need to engage the enemy. A variant labeled XA-42 was designed in 1943. The design carried 16 machine guns, or two machine guns and a cannon. However, the model was never finished. The prototype used Allison V-1710-125 liquid-cooled engines, which were located behind the crew's cabin, matched with a complex drivetrain. Each engine powered one of the plane's stacked propellers. The pusher propeller design gave the plane clean wings, which also assisted in flying at high speeds. Douglas wanted to mass-produce the aircraft. The company knew that its future B-43 aircraft could be produced quickly and rapidly, with a potential production rate of 200 planes a month. At one point, the U.S. Air Force has considered placing an order for 50 of them. However, these plans never materialized, since the USAAF was more interested in the XB-45 Tornado Bomber, which would improve upon every performance aspect. First Tests While work on the XB-43 version wasn't complicated, just as Douglas predicted, it required almost two years to be ready for flight due to constant delays with the J-35 power plants. The delays were mostly caused by the general slowdown in the aviation industry in the U.S. following the conclusion of the Second World War. In the meantime, the first two completed XB-42 prototypes had had their maiden flight on May 6, 1944. Still, they did not fly with turbojets. The first turbojet bomber aircraft flew on May 17, 1946, taking off from Iraq Army Air Base, piloted by Bob Brush, with engineer Russell Thaw in the co-pilot seat. From the get-go, the aircraft had significant handling issues. The low-slung tail was cumbersome during takeoff and landing. Furthermore, while in flight, the XB-42 suffered from excessive yaw and energetic vibration. The cooling of the V-1710 engines was troublesome as well. Still, the high speed worked. Issues were mostly fixed through small adjustments. Douglas Aircraft waited expectantly for the arrival of the General Electric engines. 
once they were installed and tested for taxing, something went wrong. During one of these tests, an engine failed horribly. The compressor blades burst through the engine casing, destroying parts of the airframe and even injuring a technician. This resulted in an additional seven months of waiting time for repairs to be completed. The completed XB-42, under the A configuration, traveled up to 410 miles per hour and cruised at over 300 miles per hour. It could carry a payload of 8,000 pounds. Furthermore, it could fire within a range of 2,000 miles. Despite the initial setbacks and time-consuming development, the aircraft was considered a smashing success. Yet the final testing and success of the high-altitude B-29 Superfortress undermined the success, reducing the need for other planes. Since jet engine technology just emerged, and piston engine-based designs were dying out, the XB-42 was left in temporary limbo. Eventually, it was scrapped. Record-breaking In December 1945, Pilot Glenn Edwards broke the speed of flight record using an XB-42. He flew from Long Beach, California to Washington, D.C. in only 5 hours and 17 minutes. Unfortunately, the aircraft itself ended up irreparably damaged due to gear failures soon after landing. Still, its sister craft survived and moved to test programs. For one of the tests, the aircraft was modified by the introduction of two Westinghouse turbojets under the clean wings. Still, they offered only 1,600 pounds of thrust each. XB-43 the XB-42 flew multiple test flights to show the capabilities and challenges of jet engine technology configured as XB-42A. Douglas Aircraft managed a top speed of 488 miles per hour. However, the plane was damaged beyond repair. By 1949, the Army Air Forces removed the aircraft from its official inventory. Still, this was not the death of the design. Under the amended 1944 contract, Douglas built the jet-powered prototype XB-43, using mostly the XB-42 airframe. Two ordered prototypes were built. One was an adapted XB-42 static test version, given the XB-43 configuration through the removal of its Allison V-1710 V-12 engines and their replacement with the General Electric J-35 turbojets. Two inlets were cut on each side of the XB-42 behind the cockpit. Elongated exhaust ducts were placed where the coaxial propellers once sat. Due to the lack of propellers in the design, the bottom stabilizer of the cruciform tail was removed. This last change helped in fixing the ground handling issues. The vertical stabilizer, on the other hand, was more difficult. Douglas Aircraft felt the project was promising. They pressured the Army Air Force to get a production contract for a bomber and an attack variant. Still, the military decided to take a wait-and-see position and patiently stood by while Douglas developed and tested it. The XB-43 was crucial in the development of new procedures and developments using jet engine technology. A second prototype was completed and flown on May 15, 1947. It arrived at Morocco Air Force Base in California in April 1948. This version was designated YB-43, nicknamed by personnel as Versatile 2. Its nose had clear plastic, replaced with plywood once it started cracking due to extremely high or low temperatures. To keep the plane airborne, the first XB-43 was cannibalized for the second prototype when the Versatile 2 was damaged in February 1951. Versatile 2 logged 300 hours of flight time until it was retired in December 1953. Wait and see. The wait-and-see position turned out to be a wise choice, since the J-35 power plant suffered frequent delays. Soon after installing them on the XB-42, one of the engines detonated, which delayed the overall program by half a year. The war ended within that time. Once the XB-43 was created, the Army Air Force opted to treat it as a test bid rather than a possible production plane. Instead, they focused their energy on the more promising B-45 Tornado, which would become the first operational jet bomber. As a result, the true first jet bomber was left without a contract, despite overperforming. Several processes, procedures, and tactics developed for the XB-43 set a precedent for future jet bombers. The hours of test flights provided valuable information for future developments as well. Some documentation even refers to the YB-43 prototype as the A-43, suggesting that there was at least some discussion around using the aircraft in an attack role. Surviving Airframes there's only one remaining model of the XB-42, and another of the XB-43. Although both are hosted at the United States Air Force Museum in Wright-Patterson Air Force Base by Dayton, Ohio, both are covered, awaiting restoration. While the aircraft did not survive the test of time, the XB-42 and 43 started a new era of aircraft development for the United States, focusing primarily on speed. It helped the Air Force and private companies develop a plan for dealing with jet aircraft operations, since the XB-43 was the first jet bomber to fly in the United States. 
As the Cold War started, the United States found itself deep in an ever-changing era of jet bomber developments. These bombers were significant in deterring nuclear war with the Soviet Union. <laughs> 